Let resolution be your solution. And it's Mark Stand here with the Resolution Radio 2020. Today's topic is technology. How technology has improved our lives. Right from medication through to transportation. Things that have made your life easier, my life easier, with the very fact that we're able to communicate here via the radio and the fact that you're able to ring me up on your mobile telephones. You're able to communicate with us via the internet, emails, texts, that kind of thing. How these things have helped with society, how things have improved to the extent that we can not only communicate, but we can fly from one city to another, from one country and continent to another in a matter of hours. So if you're in a, li- a dreary country with it where it's cold and wet, I'm not naming any names there, you can fly to Florida or California or somewhere nice, or Hawaii, oh my word, Hawaii, and you can, or perhaps even Las Vegas for a bit of a holiday there and a nice and get yourself thoroughly warmed up, you know, uh, the cockles of your heart. Well, technology has made a big difference in our lives from the automobile, where again, you can drive from place to place, carry your goods and chattels around with you all day long without feeling the strain and the weight on your back. So for me, technology is very important. It's helped us all improve things. I mean, in our lifetime, most of our lifetime at least, there's been a moonshot and the space shuttle. Obviously, I've never been a passenger in either of those. However, they did exist and do exist, and they are part of our everyday life, the memory of those things. So there we go. The topic for today, technology. What's your experience of technology? How has experiencing technology help you out? Perhaps it's sending application forms for work uh, via the Internet rather than what some people have started to refer to as snail mail. Let me know. Give us a call on the usual number. I look forward to hearing from you. Technology. Mike Sand in your calls. Well, we're talking about progress and uh, the way that things are developing. And uh, it's nice to get a, my producer just told me that uh, our next caller is a, a younger caller. And uh, this is Joel. Uh, now then, Joel, go ahead and uh, let's hear you make your point. So uh, I understand you're on in the afternoon this week. Yeah, uh, that's great. I, I mean, it's two o'clock. I've, I've just had my breakfast, right? And I, I wanted to, to draw your attention to a bit of a, a thing that sort of sort of grinds my gears, really. Go ahead now. You're live on the radio. So, right, I'm a student, right? And uh, I've been listening to your program all morning. And it uh, seems like you're talking about, you know, things that should be improved and what have you, you know. Uh, so I was thinking that my, my, my your generation's ruined everything for everyone. You've commercialised everything, right? And and so we we we've got like inherited a world that's ruined, ruined, right? Uh, and it's 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 not good, yeah. Well, you blame the entire older generation for this. Uh, I understand where you're coming from. I, I gather you're a student. Uh, 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 what uh, what university uh, courses are you taking? So um, I'm like taking English, uh, and it's great, and uh, I'm enjo- I'm enjoying it. But uh, you know, I'm still upset about the way things have sort of degenerated in in in, in my time. You know, and everybody seems to be all, only about buying the property and, and everything like that. And, and and I think it's 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 just a waste of an opportunity. Uh, Oh, uh, I've got to go. Uh, I've just had a notification on my on my phone that uh, uh, an item I'm buying on eBay is so it's, it's just about to finish. Got to go. See you, man. Well, that was Joel there. I think there was a little hint of irony at the end that uh, he's criticising uh, my generation for all the commercialization, but uh, had to go because something had uh, come up for his uh, attention to buy on eBay. Thank you for your call, Joel. I hope to hear from you again in the future. Mike Sand in your calls. So here I am, doing you up to tell you a bit of a story. All right. I'm stood in my house. My mate rings me up. He's in his van driving about. 
he rings me up, he says, I tell you what, he, he says, the signal's breaking up. He says, are you moving from room to room or something? This guy's driving along on the motorway. I says, well, say, wait a minute. I says, you're the one who's moving. Why do you always assume the signal's breaking up at my end? It's like a piece of string, in it? It might be frayed at your end, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's frayed at my end, does it? Anyway, that was the end of that. He broke up and off he went. Let resolution be your solution. Hi then, hello, hello again, Mike. Long time, uh, no, no uh, communication. Uh, I hope you've been well. I'm, fi I'm fine. I'm very well. Now then, you phoned in to have a chat, make a point, talk to my radio show. What can I do for you today? Oh, well, well you see, what it is, uh, our, our town, uh, you know, it's all full of those uh, sort of... Uh, Corridors of, um, you know, industrial units where shops are. You know, they used to be on High Street. Used to have a, a Dixons, a Curry's, or even a Comet. You know, but now we've got to go to these industrial complexes. So I, I thought to myself, well, I, you know, uh, the wife uh, has asked me, you know, can we go down and get a microwave? And I thought, microwave? Oh, do we need a uh, microwave? Oh, oh, okay then. And we better move into sort of twentieth or two, or even twenty first century. You know. So anyway, we we uh, we got his togs on, you know, got his coats and got got bank card and all that, you know, ready to go, and got on a bus and went down into town, and then got another bus and went down in, out to the industrial unit and sought out the place. Sorry, there is there a point to this story? It sounds all very interesting. Your travel movements throughout your local town. Oh yes, uh, well, well uh, what, uh, yes, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm building up to it, Mike. I'm I, I'm 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 doing my best. So anyway, we, we walked into the shop and we had a look around and they had these microwaves and some of them were gigantic, I thought. Uh, call them microwaves, they're not very small, are they? You know what I mean? I expected them to be smaller than they are, but uh, enough to get a pie in, obviously, so that you could, uh, you know, you could cook it from, uh, you know, obviously it's already been pre-cooked pre by the butcher, but, uh, you know, just to warm it up so you can have it with your peas for your tea, you know. Anyway... Uh, Microwaves, it's to do with the cooking method. It's not to do with the size of the actual implement there. Oh, uh, uh, oh, of course, yes, microwaves. A bit like they used to use in radar back in the day. Very dangerous if you're not careful with those microwaves. I suppose that's why it's got a door on it that you're supposed to sh shut, you know, when you, put your, uh, when you put your items that you want to warm up in it. Anyway, the main point of my story is uh, I nearly give myself a hernia bringing it home. Something that I, I was expecting to be a lot smaller, but I, I realise now the, the, the insignificance of my mistake. Well, glad to be of service there for you. Have a nice day. Let resolution be your solution. I, I understand that, uh, that you're talking about... Uh progress and uh, things like um, technology and so on. Well, one of the things that's happened to me recently uh, that I thought was something of a sign of the times, really, was um, on the top uh, the top meadow, uh, the, the fence uh, needed re repairing, and some of the sheep got out, you know, some of the uh, sheep got out onto the, onto the road and onto the public land just beyond, you know. So you actually own sheep on your estate? Well, absolutely, as they're all my sheep, obviously, you know. Anyway, the, the sheep got out, and uh, I thought I'd better engage a tradesperson, you know, to um, rectify the, 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 the shortcomings of the fence, you know. I mean, it was, was put up about 70 years ago, so naturally it, uh, it's going to need repairing eventually, I thought. Anyway, cheeky blighter, he contacts me, he says, would you like me to give you an estimate? I mean, an estimate. I mean, back in the day, I would have just had a, a sort of a contract with with some local fellow, and they would have, the bill would have come at the end of the month. And that would have been that. Cheeky fellow actually asked me if I want to have an estimate, as though I didn't have the funding to do the job. Oh, naturally, I engaged somebody else who never even mentioned a price. I felt much more secure about that. Well, it just shows how times have changed. Anyway, I hope you managed to skew your sheep, and uh, nobody pulled the wool over your eyes. Mike Sands in your calls. Hello, Mike. I was just ringing my, my mum. She, she, she worries about data protection. You know, about like who's got all that information and, and whether somebody should ring up and, and try to con her, right? And I thought to myself, what, what can we do about this? Because it's not great, is it? 
You know what I mean? It, it, it's difficult to know how to protect my mum from, from dodgy people. Well, I think your suggestions of trying to protect your mum is very laudable, and I think that's a great idea. Have you had any ideas at all as to what to do to maybe give her some advice, tell her to look after any credit cards and not let anybody see her putting her numbers into the ATM? Uh, is an ATM a cash machine? That's exactly correct. We we call them an ATM over over in the States. Yeah, it's a cash machine. That, that's absolutely correct. Yeah, well, I, I, I do do tell her to be careful about who's looking over her shoulder and, and, and not to, to use so much of that if you can avoid it and sometimes I go for it and obviously I'm very very careful what I was thinking you know because these companies they sell your data amongst themselves and then sell them to somebody else and then you get a phone call from a company that you have never even dealt with and it's worrying and, and I think they call it data protection but it seems to be that all rules seem to protect these companies from us which seems a bit weird to me and that's how it comes across to you it seems unusual that uh, these companies uh, seem to look after their own interests rather than uh, than yours yeah yeah and, and anyway I, I what i thought you said that uh, i could have come up with a solution and, and i think i have i wonder how much it would cost from these companies if we were able to buy our data back so that we owned it instead of them to buy your data back from the companies who have been buying and selling it between themselves. I just don't think that would be possible. Where would you track it all down? Well, as ever, a very interesting conversation. Now, you take care and stay safe. Mike Sam in your calls. Good morning, Mike. He's half here. I'll tell you what it is. I thought to myself... You're talking about technology and, uh, and all the improvements in society and all that kind of thing. Uh, I know it's, it's the topic of today. That's absolutely correct. And were you going to make a contribution about this topic? Absolutely, yes. I don't know whether you're going to believe me, but I've got to tell you, I, I, I actually invented the iPad. And I'll tell you how I did it. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me, I actually had, had a cough there. Uh, what it was, I was in the pub, I, I was having a, a bit of... A uh, baker's sandwich and a, and a pint with my friend, and he, he gets out of it. This is a few, good few years ago, this is. He gets out of his pocket, he gets out of one of these iPhones. And they hadn't been out very long, a matter of months, you know what I mean? He has to have every modern gadget known to man. He's, I think even his car's automatic, you know, that kind of fella. And anyway, he gets himself the I, iPhone out, and I says, What's that? He says, It's an iPhone. <laughs> I says, what's, what's a flipping iPhone then? I, I, I couldn't understand it for a minute. Anyway, he gives it me in my hand and I have a look at it. And what did you think of the iPhone? Were you impressed? It Was it an eye-opening experience having that in your hand? Oh, it's very funny, that. But, uh, well, no, I, said, well, I looked at it and I thought, oh, it's all right, isn't it? It's, you can view the internet on it and things like that. It's like a window on the world, he says to me. He says, he'd read this bump that came with it, bump, he called it. And I says, well, all right, it says information. He says, it's a window on the world if you can look at any website, have a look at anything you want, you know what I mean? And I thought, well, that's impressive, it's impressive in a way, it's all right, isn't it? But, you know, it's not, it's not very big, is it? You know, you don't get a full picture of, of what you're looking at. So if you want to look at something you do on the side of the world, you want a good old look at it, you know what I mean? To have it in, your, in, your, in the palm of your hand, but a bit sort of bigger, right? So you thought the iPhone was a little sort of small? Absolutely. I mean, I didn't want it to be as big as a computer like What I thought was it'd be about four times the area, well, same thickness, obviously sort of, uh, you know, a big screen on it and, and connect to the internet and that kind of thing. Maybe have a camera in it, maybe have a phone in it so it's all things to all people. You know what I mean? The first one that comes out, they ought to invent one that, that's big like that. So that what a, anyway, my mate says to me, that's no good. I says, well, why is that? Then? That would never catch on, he says. I says, why is that? And he says, well, they're never going to make trousers with pockets in it that big, are they? You know what I mean? So nobody buy a thing like that. So do you know what I did? I have absolutely no idea what you did. I gave up on it. I says to them, no, you're right, absolutely. Human nature, you're never going to buy a pair of trousers with pockets that big. You'd look an absolute clown, wouldn't you, walking about? So I gave up on it. Anyway, that's my experience with technology, Mike. Well, with the... Uh... Just one last thing, uh, Mike, I forgot to say. Keep smiling. 
If you like this channel, like and subscribe our page. Share it with your friends. Uh, if you understand the underlying message here, which is about entertainment and fun, keep spoiling, then continue to stay with us. I look forward to interacting with you in the future.